Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Two Couple Music IDTV, your home for B2B music news. So on today's episode, I wanted to talk about the Spotify fake artist fiasco. So last week, Music Business Worldwide broke a story with 50 fake artists who were getting a crazy amount of streams in Spotify's playlist. Millions of streams from artists that nobody's heard of. These artists didn't have any social media websites. These artists weren't available on any other streaming services. It were just 50 plus artists who just had this crazy amount of love from Spotify. Spotify and adding them to their playlists in which we know Spotify's playlists are a powerful tool for music streaming and discovery nowadays. So apparently a duo from Stockholm were actually eight of the 50 artists and they had given their music to Spotify to be distributed under a pseudonym. Now there is also another player accompanied by the name of Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is a company also based in Stockholm and this company buys music from artists and then they license it to services. So I'll make a track, I'll give it to Epidemic Sound, they'll give me a check, I don't own the rights to it anymore. Epidemic Sounds now owns the rights, they bought me out of my royalties apparently. Epidemic Sound has stated that they split percentages of royalties 50-50 with the rights holders. That's conflicting, so that's confusing. But if they do own 100% of that and they do have this flat fee that, you know, people in television and other people who want to license music can then pay this flat fee and license that music, which is supposed to be royalty-free according to Epidemic Sound, then that would make sense that potentially Spotify and Epidemic Sound could use this royalty-free stuff to maybe pocket more money for themselves because now they don't have to negotiate with these record labels and they can show favoritism to these tracks that they have a higher stake in. The reason why this is an issue is because on probably a couple weeks ago on the news I would talk to you guys about how Spotify and other streaming services play on a pro rata basis which means you get paid your percentage of the total streams. You don't get paid from each stream that you have and how much that would count. It would basically be if Madonna got a billion streams that month. If you got 2,000 you're going to be a small percentage of the payout for Spotify. And then if Madonna streams went up to 3 billion streams, but you're still at 2,000, you're gonna have even less percentage of Spotify's payout, even though your streams hadn't changed. So if they have these fake artists getting millions and millions and millions of streams and they have stake in these royalties that these songs are getting on their platform, then you would be getting less money. Everybody would be getting less money because Spotify is showing favoritism to pocket more money on their end. But also, Music Business Worldwide also goes on to say that there is no proof of this. There is no proof that Spotify is watering down the beer as uh, the term that they use in the article. There is no proof that Spotify is trying to shave off what they're paying out to rights holders at record labels and independent acts. But the thing about this is, honestly, there is an argument against the concept that Spotify is doing this because these companies could have been innocently or innocently, you know, just distributing their music exclusively to Spotify. Spotify. The founder or CEO of Epidemic Music says they have had over 10 billion streams on Facebook and YouTube for their music. So Spotify was just one outlet that they wanted to try because they had gotten requests from their listeners on where they could stream their music. So with that being said, Epidemic Sound supposedly distributed their music exclusively to Spotify. Music Business Worldwide went on to discover that there was an interesting connection between Epidemic Sound and Spotify. They're both Stockholm companies and they were both invested in by a venture capital firm based in Stockholm as well called Creandrum. Pre Creandrum? Pre Creandrum. And this company had invested millions in Spotify and millions in uh, Epidemic Sound. Now that wouldn't it wouldn't make sense that this company would want to get their money back and if Spotify and Epidemic Sound kind of got together to see how they can be more profitable on both their ends then the investors would get that money back. So that is a strong argument but then that just could mean that now that we both have the same investor, we're more aware. Maybe instead of some other company, I'll invest in Spotify because I know my investors are invested in Spotify, so I'll put my music on Spotify, which is what Epidemic Sound could have done. So to be honest, this might be a lot of smoke without a fire, but if it is a fire, it's a pretty fucked up fight because for Spotify to be cheating you out of the pennies on the dollar that they're already paying would be a terrible act by the company. So hopefully you guys aren't doing that. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. What
whether or not you think Spotify is colluding with Epidemic Sound to keep you from being paid your rightful money by surging plays from artists that they have some sort of stake in or this royalty free music that they have some sort of stake in. Do you think Spotify is guilty of this or don't you? Let us know in the comment section below. Share with your friends, like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications button just so you can stay informed. We'll be posting at least four videos a week. Once again, my name is Tuco with Music ID TV. Bye, Nara.